What's up everybody, it's your boy Uchi, and I'm joined by my boy Housetop over on this Skype. Say what's up. Back again. What's up? And we are back again, once again, here with another Pokemon video because a bunch of news just came out, even though it was off of one trailer, technically not really even one, because this has gone so deep where people are now just venturing off onto the the Japanese the French version yes like the uh, is it's getting <laughs> it's getting so nuts but that's okay because we're about to just go over basically everything in a nutshell and just kind of work with it from there so without a further ado let's get on with this Pokemon news update analysis All right, so Joey, talk to me about what is going on with our American trailer. I know we have a, it was shorter than the Japanese version, and yeah, like, yeah significantly oh, yeah. shorter. Yeah, yeah, shorter. So we got Type Null, or that's its final name. It is normal type and has the ability Battle Armor, and it looks pretty funky. So I guess we'll go into that in a little bit. Then we got uh, Jang Moo. Got the Dragon type. Apparently, uh, our good friend Loxton told us that it's actually based on a dragon from uh, Hawaii, I'm assuming it's probably like a little bit of lore stuff, with the ability of bulletproof and soundproof. This thing's actually like super cute, I don't know. I like I don't it. Know how much you like it, I thought it was... I'm a fan. It's got like a little yellow heart on its head. Yeah. yeah. I think it's gonna be, uh, I feel like it's gonna be the new fossil. Ah, uh, like okay. Fossils. I, I can see that. Yeah, it definitely looks like part. Because it looks like a, yeah, it looks like dinosaur -y. Yeah. I guess like it's more like a dragon, like it's based on. Then we had the... Eradicate a Lola form, so we got the uh, it has uh, the ability of gluttony and hustle because it looks like a fat gangster kind of <laughs> big and chubby it, uh, cheeks. Yeah, dude, You've gotta hold all the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> he is dark and normal, normal type. I, I think he's just a uh, normal type in other regions. Yeah, then we got the news that both Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are going to be set 12 hours apart from each other. It's going to be like a like a day-night cycle. Not really sure how it's going to play out, like if there's going to be real time in the game. I, I honestly don't see how this is really going to take a huge effect on the gameplay, considering that people mess with their times on their systems as it is. So, right. I mean, I don't know if... I honestly, I don't know if what they're trying to say is they're implementing that no matter what you do to your time on your system, it will be like figuratively 12 hours ahead or before whatever game you decide to play so right. no matter because what it's, it's only so... 12 hours it's not like 24 hours so it's not like if you play moon you're going to be consistently in a dark setting and if you play sun you're going to be light all day no it's not it's not how it's going to work either thank god that'd be kind of annoying yeah, but that's... i feel like most of the important uh most of the important events that are going to be going on in the game are going to be like, if you're doing it in Pokemon Sun, it's going to be, like, daytime out. Whereas in Moon, I think it's going to be nighttime for most of the stuff because of how they showed the island, the trials. I guess I think that's what it's called, the trials. Yeah, the trailer Between, specifies, uh, like, shoot. certain events uh, will be taking place during yeah. each game differently. Yeah, it showed Gumshoe during Sun, and then when it was nighttime, it had the uh, a little form of Raticate for the uh, getting the Super Saiyan abilities going on. Yeah. The then for the next thing that was shown was the Aether or Aether Foundation, which uh, has some pretty pretty uh, interesting stuff behind it. They ended up developing a, I guess, I don't really know if it was like a fifth island, but a, a man-made island in the middle of the Alola region that is said to hold, well, not really hold, but protect the Pokemon that Team Skull is after. So they're like, not, we're not really sure if they are good guys yet, or if they are more of an anti-hero. Hmm. Not really sure, but, but from, what I was gathering is, like, I, I don't know how much I trust these guys, but I know they are opposing Team Skull, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Right. So, kind of getting that kind of vibe off of them. Mm -hmm. But we got, we got some new people. We got Usomine. I don't, I'm probably butchering the shit out of that. But uh, she is the glamorous president of the foundation. Mm -mm -mm. And she says that she wants to be a like a mother to all the Pokemon in, uh, in all the regions, actually. Because she was talking about how she wanted to like rescue all the Pokemon from all the different islands and like through time or whatever. Kind of weird. 
We're not even through all the islands, through all the uh, different regions, which is pretty cool. That's pre that's pretty interesting for her to say. Yep. So then we got a uh, Faba with the uh, nice green glasses. He's the branch chief. Kind of seems like a scientist. The uh, because since they used him to introduce that the island was a man-made island in the middle of the region, I feel like maybe he had something to do with that, but. I, get, I don't really know the uh, the time, like when the island was formed and everything like that. I guess, well, I'm sure we'll find out. And we have Wick, or Wiki, who is the uh, very busty assistant branch chief of the... Busty! Uh, not really too much from her. And then we have Sasuke, I mean, we have uh, Gladian, <laughs> who, <laughs> who uh, is charging his Chidori in the trailer for him. He actually, in, in the English trailer, he was just kind of there and they... They showed him, and he's like, you can't run away from me, or you can't get out of this fight, or whatever. He's pretty, he seems pretty cool. He seems really, uh, he's a really interesting character because don't really know too much about him, except for, the, aside from him being on Team Skull, but he seems, like, very young. Like, he seems around the same age as the protagonist, and Lily, and Hal, and the main character, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of role he plays. Because it said he was like the main like fighter, I guess. Not really fighter, but but I I might have something for you about that. So going on, we have the collection of the Zygarde cells, which I'm assuming is going to have to. In, I'm I'm assuming that's going to be like a huge part of the game, having to go around and collect all the, Z the Zygarde cells to form a perfect Zygarde. Yep. Where being that if uh, or the complete Zygarde, because if what Loxen says is true and Zygarde plays this huge part in this game, that's going to be a crucial element. But I, th I thought it was kind of funny how like. They show you getting the Zygarde cube, and it's just like from these two random people, like in the town, like, "Oh, you want this kid? Sure, here you go. Like, go collect this giant mythical Pokemon that is like splattered around the island." Nah, but dude, did you peep who those two random people just might end up being? Who? What? Those? If I'm, if we're talking about the same thing right now, it yeah. should. Those two, they have like sunglasses and hats on, right? Yeah. Okay, those two characters are actually Sycamore's, like, lab student Jones. Oh. Uh... Yeah, son. They're in disguise for some reason. We don't know for what, but that's... I'm pretty sure I saw that on Loxen's Twitter, too. So, again, shout out to Loxen for that one. Dude, it all comes together. It all <laughs> comes together. <laughs> From there, it went into the uh, Pokemon Snap minigame. That, that really excited me actually because I was uh, just playing Pokemon Snap recently with the GF and we were actually having a lot of fun. So it's going to be really cool being able to go around and take pictures of all the Pokemon and have everybody raid them and stuff. I'm just kind of, I hope that they don't use the old system for writing sentences like they used to whenever you were like interviewed by a TV, TV station and they were like, choose from the dialogue below and then like you had to go through all the different things. Like I hope you can leave actual comments when they filter it out. Well, like you said, I mean, this is probably a test run to see how engaging this little mini game might be to potentially create an actual sequel to Pokemon Snap. And I would die. That would be, <laughs> be fantastic. Because they could use, they literally can use the 3DS to do it. And then, like, they could be almost like Pokemon Go, where certain areas in the real world have, like, different things, like, camera can recognize it. I mean, I don't know how good the technology is or whatever. That would be but crazy. They're pretty sweet. And then from there, we had the reveal of the Ultra Beast, mm -hmm. which would be UB1, which is pretty, uh, pretty similar to, uh, you know, Lily. Kind of kind of looks like her a little bit. So I guess we'll, we can go into that now. Okay, so yeah, let her, let her rip. So pretty much people are saying, or people, everybody is saying, that UB1 is actually Lily. And we found out through our good friends over in France, and, and lost in back in once again. Mm -hmm. That Ultra Beast in French actually is translated to Ultra Chimera. <laughs> which <laughs> explains why Type Null looks really similar to Arceus. Like like incredibly <laughs> incredibly similar to Arceus. So that's that's pretty interesting because what what I read is that I know I don't think it's true, but they were saying like Type Null is a mix between what is like like Gyarados and Houndoom and Skarmory and then whatever for the head, but you could you can tell that it, it definitely is man-made. There's no way that that thing is natural. Just nope. like uh, not at all. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of creepy actually. But I, I noticed that the mask that it has on has like a crack. It's not really a crack, but it's like a line going on the front. So it looks like this thing is actually wearing like a a helmet. Like to me, that's what it looks like. Yeah. 
So it looks like it's like hiding something, and then maybe it'll like eventually like break off, and then we'll be a, we'll actually find out what it is. Yep. But <laughs> so here, I'm going to link you what I want what I want to show you. Oh God. So this is some, some pretty pretty important stuff that I'm, I'm going to talk about while while you look at this link. Okay, so you sent it to me. Okay. So people are now saying that ta, 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 I can open this now. You can open this now. People are saying that Gladion, Lusamine, and Lily are related. Okay. They all have similar hair. They have like the blonde, weird. I don't know what kind of style you would call that hair. They all have green eyes. They're all pale skin. And then, I don't. I don't know how true this one is. I saw this in the comment section. People are saying that Guzma is the father. Oh. And that, and that siblings are split between the two because something happened. And I think. I don't know how true it is, but I feel like the something that happened is that one of the parents tried to experiment on Lily and she became <gasps> a chimera. Oh my god. And that, but maybe that's what caused the rift between the two, but I don't I don't know how true the Guzma thing is. But that would make so much sense. Holy crap, it, that really maybe, would. Maybe they tried it first on type null and they're like okay this this is like a this is like a proof, a proof of concept there you go it's like a proof of concept that it can work and so then they were like all right let's do it on our daughter and then maybe one of them was like no no that's not right uh, blah 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 and so maybe the pokemon that, that's the uh the team either or the either foundation is hiding on the island is more chimera type pokemon like because if it's ultra beast one or, or ultra chimera one then who says that there isn't two, three, four, five, you know? Like, what mm -hmm. happens if um, Palladium is one? Watch it be six more to make it seven. I would lock them with shit his pants. I would shit my pants. Yep. <laughs> oh my. But, like, it it makes so much sense being that um, Palladium has Type Null as his main um, Pokemon, as we saw in the Japanese trailer. So... Pretty interesting stuff. Lots of lots of stuff to suck on and <laughs> think about. Yep, definitely a lot. And is there anything else? Oh, there was um, the UV one coming out of the portal. Oh, very important. Could possibly could possibly lead to um, dimensions between worlds or dimensions between actually d between like universes, like from how uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire kind of, or well, I guess X and Y. That's why Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire kind of stopped reset the series with the um, the Mega Evolution, like bringing that in. Like how they said in, in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire that there was like a different time, or there was like a different universe. It's kind of like a multiverse kind of thing. Mm. So maybe she's like pulling between that. Or there are like wormholes in between different areas in the world and they're able to kind of just like warp in between. It would be really interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, all of this is literally only fueling what Loxton has already been essentially outlining for us. Yeah. This theory is becoming so scary only because of how factual it is and how with yeah. every bit of information that's coming out, we are realizing that this theory is just more and more closer to being 100% fact. Yeah. So, I mean, yet again, another, like, it's funny, just off of a one trailer, essentially one trailer, because, like, every part of the world has their one trailer, and even yeah. though there might be minor differences or major differences between all of them, it is, there was one trailer that just, that came out on one day, and literally a full like you know maybe what 12 hours will go by and everyone's already coming up with all this stuff and then all the top you know theorists especially Loxton I'm sure Loxton is the guy right now that is oh just putting everything together and he even oh, said in his short video that he had to release today he said a lot of all the stuff that come out, that came out today is definitely plays a part in part three which he even okay. went on to say that will most likely be an hour yeah, that's that's insane. It's it's almost as long as the first one. Yeah, it's gonna be longer. And he he said that 
he he almost had enough for a part four, but he didn't wanna. He wants to do part three. Yeah, just that, end it with so a trilogy. Crazy. That's so, that's insane. Yep. Yep. I, yeah, I'm speechless, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's all coming together. The, I, what what really got to me is just the whole the whole connection between Type Null and how he could very possibly be that first attempt at trying to create Ar an Arceus. Um, yeah. What really stands out is you know besides the fact that you can clearly see just off of what this Pokemon's appearance is is that he was deaf or it was definitely something that was man-made and it even confirms that in its description it says this was a man-made pokemon so obviously yeah. what does that mean especially with all the knowledge that we and information that we know now this is heavily 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 has a lot to do with alchemy this is a chimera okay and this chimera was an attempt to be something greater something more on a godly plane and that obviously is arceus okay Yep. That really got to me first and foremost. The second thing that really has me going is this whole Lily thing being Ubi01 or Ubi1, however you want to pronounce it. Like, it is so, like, it's pretty much crystal clear. Like, if you can, if you put these two next to each other, you can literally see the connection, the relation. How, like, this is basically, like, Lily is pretty much cosplaying as this Pokemon. Yeah. Okay? And the fact that this is something... I'm pretty sure Loxton even mentioned this in his part 2 or 2.5 or something. That, Or maybe it was part 1. I don't even remember. But he says that... Uh, he, he mentioned briefly of something about how Pokemon are now starting to, like... They're trainers and the Pokemon that have a relationship and they kind of like resemble each other. Like, so like the whole Ash Greninja thing. Well, this is pretty much taking oh, yeah. that a whole step further. And you have Lily, who is rumored, speculated to be UB1. I don't like, and like, the, and like this whole portal thing. Like, going in between universes, like this, this whole theory is, the, honestly, I just feel like. Nintendo, Game Freak, all the parties involved in this game, once this game comes out and once, you know, someone does that playthrough and we find, we see the ending to the game, how it all comes together, blah, 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 they should just hit this guy up and give him a freaking Nobel Peace Prize because this dude cracked the game before it even came out. And, that, and he basically cracked the entirety of Pokemon as we know it. It's not even just this game. That he took little known, little known tidbits, and is now just forming this huge tree, if you will. Let's just keep tying in more things. Yeah, that, with the north. Yeah, the south, yeah. Those, those are my two big, big things right now. And then I guess for number three, it's gonna have to be what you surprised me with, with how Lily is related to these two other characters. That I am looking, it, it, literally, it's so scary that to, to like it has to tr be true. And yeah, there's no way. Yeah, like, and like the scenario, it just ma it just makes too much sense for it to not be true, which makes it more scary because it's like, man, I don't think this has ever been done with any video game before, where the fans have literally, well, it's like the fans after Loxton, I would say, because Loxton definitely put in all this work to basically lay out this blueprint for us to kind of elaborate on certain things and to i guess brainstorm other things that he probably has already figured out let's be honest so oh, yeah. but yeah i'm just totally excited for this game i can't wait for november 18th to hit and hopefully by then i'll have enough donations on my stream that i will be getting that capture card so that way i can stream the game and that'd be super cool Maybe. if if I if, like, I will literally. I'm going. What I'm gonna do is, I'm literally gonna get one game. Well, I'm gonna get both. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna play one of the games on stream and have the other game to be played off stream if I'm ever off stream. But I'm pretty sure, and I'm set in my mind that I'm gonna be streaming Pokemon until I complete it. <laughs> uh, so, is there anything else that we need to add, or you want to add, or anything? Well. 
there was, I think we talked, I think I, I mentioned it that Aether is the fifth element of alchemy. Okay, yep. Yep. Yeah, but I think I think that's about it. Because I, I don't remember too much from Loxton's video, but we can just link the video. You know? <laughs> Obviously, we're going to shout yep. out our boy Loxton, as always. Watch his videos if you have not. It's like, if you're a Pokemon fan, and if you're not watching his videos, something's wrong with you. Like, yeah, yeah. I question your fandom, I'm not going to lie. Like, these theories are basically... They are basically the Bible. <laughs> yeah, the, the Pokey Bible. Yeah, pretty much. Like, this is the word written and created by the genius and professor himself, Loxton. Huh. Arigato gozaimasu. All the freaking way. <laughs> I mean, unless you, unless you have anything else, else to say, I, I'm, all, I'm all out. Yeah, no, that's it. All right, guys. We'll check us out later. You can hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe as always. Hit us up on Twitter, like I just said. Let us know everything that's going on in your head when it comes to these Pokemon theories. Pokemon Sun and Moon. The reset theory. The end theory. Is this really it? It's looking like it. So, let's get it. We'll be back again once again with some more content in the future. Make sure to tune in, subscribe. Every Wednesday, I'll be coming out with big time videos like this. And, you know, during the week, I'll probably release a little smaller ones and then stream whenever. So, without further ado, thanks, House Top, for always joining me for these especially special Pokemon videos. Always, man. I always do this. Yes. And with that, we are out of here.